What do you love more, ancient archaeology or ancient mysteries? Well, why should you have to choose when you could have both at once? Our ancient ancestors left us some phenomenal mysteries to contend with, and it's likely that we'll never be able to solve them all. Still, it's fun to try, so let's try and solve a few in this video. There's a burial ground in northern France that contains the remains of numerous Stone Age men and just one woman. These people were laid to rest in a monumental cemetery some 6,500 years ago. What's puzzling archaeologists about the discovery isn't just the presence of the woman, but the fact that the woman was the only person at the site to be buried with weapons. To be more specific, she was buried with arrowheads. Experts aren't sure what to make of both the fact that she was a woman and the fact that she was buried with weapons and surrounded by men. Might she have been their queen? If so, why were none of her people armed so they could protect her? Was she a warrior woman who protected her tribe? Was she viewed as a male by her peers? Perhaps the act of burying her along with her weapons made her symbolically male and gave her the right to be buried alongside the men. Actually, on the other hand, maybe our confusion has more to do with the fact that there's still way too much we don't know about the lives and cultures of our Neolithic ancestors. There's a wall in Zahab County, Iran, that's been compared to Hadrian's Wall in England. We don't think that's a fair comparison to make. We know who built Hadrian's Wall. It was the ancient Romans. We also know why they built it. It was to keep out the Scots. By contrast, we have no idea who built the wall in Iran or why. The only thing it has in common with Hadrian's Wall is that with a length of roughly 70 miles, it's about the same size. The wall has a volume of more than 35 million cubic feet of stone. The resources and manpower involved in putting it together would have been enormous, and yet there's no historical record of its construction. All archaeologists can do is take their best guess. Based on fragments of pottery that have been found along the wall, they think it was built somewhere between 2400 and 1400 years ago. That's a very large window but that's the best they can do. Although it's a relatively new discovery to archaeologists, people living near the wall have always known of its existence and refer to it as the Gari Wall. However, even they can't shed any light on its origins. Speaking of ancient mysteries set in stone, let's take a look at the enigmatic rock art of Gabistan in Azerbaijan. The collection of petroglyphs at the site is truly enormous, and some experts believe that the oldest of the artwork dates back more than 40,000 years. In some ways, you could look at this as a collection of art that traces the history of humanity in this part of Eurasia from the Paleolithic era all the way through to the Middle Ages. It's impossible to say how many individual pieces of art there are here because experts don't believe they've found them all yet but it's safe to say that the number is at least 6,000. Many of the pieces are little more than crude drawings of plants and animals, but there are also many representations of humans performing a wide variety of activities. It's thought that the first archaeologist to properly document Gobistan was the Norwegian adventurer Thor Heredal in 1981. He returned to the site four times between then and 2000 and went to his grave convinced that at least some of the artwork was created by Vikings. Not everyone shares those views, but there do appear to be similarities to Viking artwork in places. The Colossus of Rhodes was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and one of the greatest feats of sculpture the human race ever accomplished. The fact that it's no longer standing today is a tragedy. Historical records tell us the Colossus was a depiction of Helios, the Greek sun god, and once stood in the city of Rhodes on the Greek island of the same name. The precise site of the Colossus is a matter of fierce debate between historians and remains unknown. The sculpture was designed and built by Shars of Lindos in the year 280 BC as a celebration of Rhodes successfully defeating the armies of Demetrius Poliorcetes after a year-long siege. 
The alleged height of the Colossus was 108 feet, which would make it about the same height as the Statue of Liberty. Just 54 years after it was built, the Colossus collapsed during an earthquake. Pieces of it survived, and some sources say that Hadrian had it rebuilt, but other sources dispute that suggestion. In the year 653, Arab forces controlled by Muawiyah I seized Rhodes, then destroyed what was left of the sculpture. People still talk about building a new one to this day. The Hollywood Stone sounds like something you'd expect to find on a visit to California, but it isn't. Instead, you'll find it thousands of miles away in County Wicklow, Ireland. There's a Hollywood in County Wicklow, just like there's a Hollywood in California. And it's probably best known for being the place where the boulder known as the Hollywood Stone was discovered in 1908. The stone is actually a granite boulder, roughly four feet tall and three feet wide, with a labyrinth pattern carved into its face. Based on the style of the design, historians think that it was influenced by Christian traditions and was probably created during the Middle Ages. They can't say for sure, though, because dating stone is almost impossible, and part of the pattern has been chipped away at some point in the distant past. Any chance of obtaining a reliable date for the artifact was probably gone forever the moment that the people who found it moved it from its original location so they could take a better look at it indoors. The labyrinth design is thought to be symbolic of a pilgrim's spiritual journey towards his destination, with a cross at the center. It's one of only two artifacts featuring this design ever to be found in Ireland. The ancient Romans used ceramic pots for just about everything. They used them to store and transport grain, wine, bread, money, and, as it turns out, human waste. That's right, the Romans also used ceramic pots as portable toilets. And we know that because of a smelly-sounding scientific and archaeological project that concluded in February 2022. A team of experts has been analyzing crusty material found inside the surface of ceramic pots found at the site of a 5th century Roman villa in Sicily. Under a microscope, the crust was found to contain the remains of intestinal parasites. The scientists identified the eggs of whipworm, which is a telltale sign that the ceramic pot once contained human feces. The worm eggs had been clinging to the inside of the pots for more than 1,500 years. They got trapped within layers of minerals that formed on the surface of the pot, ensuring they'd still be there for the scientists to find. We're sure you'll be thrilled to know that the discovery is the first time that parasitic eggs have been found inside a Roman ceramic vessel. Hey, nobody ever said being a scientist was a glamorous job. Our next discovery takes us to the Sayagazi district of Eskaisir in Turkey, where municipal workers accidentally found a strange-looking ancient sarcophagus during what ought to have been routine excavations in March 2021. The sarcophagus is made of marble but is just 4 inches and 9 feet long and 12 inches wide. Thus far, it hasn't even been possible to say how old the sarcophagus is, although it's reasonable to estimate that it was made several thousand years ago. It's badly damaged, so it's sadly no longer possible to read the inscriptions that once marked its surface. As we can see in these images, though, the sarcophagus is separated into several pieces and appears to come with a separate container for the head. It's a design that archaeologists have never come across before, and they're not entirely sure what to make of it. What they can say with certainty is that the sarcophagus is empty, which begs the question of why it was buried in the first place. Is it a symbolic burial? Did someone rob the grave thousands of years ago but leave the sarcophagus behind? Sadly, we suspect we'll never get answers to these questions. The Lebeljana Marsh's wheel is the oldest wooden wheel in the world. That's not to say it was the first wooden wheel ever invented, that'd be ridiculous, but it's fantastically old. The artifact was found in the Lebeljana Marsh in Slovenia in 2002. Radiocarbon dating tests carried out in Vienna determined the wheel to be around 5,150 years old. Unsurprisingly, the marsh that the wheel was found in is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
The wheel wasn't actually the first historical artifact of significance to be found in the marsh. That honor goes to pieces of old pile dwellings that were recovered in the late 19th century. It's thought that the region has been settled by humans for at least 9,000 years. It's likely that the wheel was one of two in a prehistoric two-wheel pushcart, an idea supported by the fact that it was found with its axle. The axle is made of oak, while the wheel is made of ash wood. Similar designs have been seen on old wheels recovered from sites in Switzerland and Germany, although those wheels are nowhere near as old. Indeed, this is the first direct evidence that the development of the wheel might have happened in Europe and Mesopotamia simultaneously. About 13,700 years ago, a tribe of Magdalenian hunter-gatherers took shelter in a Spanish cave. While they were there, they etched some markings into the cave wall. After studying the markings since 2009, archaeologists now believe that these markings represent the oldest map in Western Europe. A team of experts from the University of Zaragoza has interpreted the etchings as depictions of peaks, rivers, scrublands, and ponds. There also appear to be a few representations of animals included, perhaps as examples of what could be hunted in each area. It might be a plan for a coming hunt or even the story of a hunt that happened in the past. But including a visual guide to the area the hunt happened in would make it a map. The alleged map is inside the legendary cave of Abans Lamazulo, which is already notorious because it's said by local folklore to be the home of bird-footed nymphs. Legends aside, it was probably a strategically important place for ancient hunters because of the excellent view it provided of the canyons below. The petroglyphs of Polish are not, as their name might suggest them to be, in Poland. Instead, you'll find them in San Martin, Peru. The meaning, age, and authenticity of these alleged petroglyphs are totally open to question. Even the caretaker who looks after them changes his story occasionally. Sometimes he'll insist that they were drawn by pre-Columbian explorers. Other times he'll say they were created by natives out of their minds on Ahuasca. Some tourists even say that he told them that they were drawings of dinosaurs made by people who'd seen the giant lizards with their own eyes. The symbols are certainly memorable. They stand out from the gray boulders they're painted on because of the white mineral pigment they were created with, which makes them appear almost luminous. The petroglyphs weren't discovered until 1966 and have never been seriously examined by archaeologists, most of whom suspect a hoax. However, there's no reason not to believe they could be authentic glyphs created by the Chachapoyas culture, and it's high time somebody paid them a proper visit to determine the facts. Chalvar's cave in Boge, Sweden is a challenging site for an archaeologist to assess. It's a stone ship from the Bronze Age, and plenty of Swedes will tell you it's the grave of Chalvar, the founder of Gotland. There's only one problem with that theory. Chalvar is a myth. Modern-day Gotland is a beautiful Baltic island with stunning weather, but legend has it that it wasn't always so. It was a stormy, cursed isle that was only tamed when a hero named Chalvar came along. You see, according to the 13th century Gouda saga, Gotland was a living creature, and it didn't like people coming to live on its back. Chalvar claimed it by spending a stormy night there and lighting a fire, cleansing it of evil and purifying its soul. Gotland accepted Chalvar as its king, and it's been a happy and tranquil place ever since. It's a fantastical story. Yet here's the catch. Boat burials like Chelvar's grave didn't become popular until the 8th century in Scandinavia. Chelvar's grave is more like 3,100 years old. Who built this grave and who lays inside it? Maybe there's some truth to the legends after all. If Batman is your favorite superhero, that's something you might have in common with the ancient Zapotec people of Mexico. The Batman they believed in wasn't a hero, though. He was a full-blown deity. He's also the subject of this stunning jade mask, which was found in what's left of the pyramids of Morite Alban. This was the center point of the Zapotec culture 2,000 years ago, and it seems that worshiping the mask of the bat god was close to the heart of that culture. The mask is a remarkable technical accomplishment for the people of the time. It's made of more than 20 separate pieces of jade, 
with painted yellow shells representing the eyes. Nobody's 100% sure why bats were so significant to the Zapotec, but it's thought that they were fascinated by the way vampire bats drank blood from cows. The bats were honored by way of human sacrifice. Presumably those sacrifices were carried out by a priest wearing a mask very similar to this one. Maybe they shone a bat signal into the night sky to let people know it was time to come and see the ritual performed. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.